Welcome to the Switch Show. I'm your host, Ben Chertoff. Get your shredders out. We're tackling personal privacy in the digital age. But first, here with the top stories you are talking about this week on Switched is Switched.com executive producer Josh Frulinger. Hey, Josh. How you doing, Ben? Not bad. That's good. So we have three interesting ones this week. First off, a kiosk worker at a Georgia airport looks down to see that his left pocket is essentially on fire. He's smoking. Yeah. Um, he had an iPod in there, which uses a lithium-ion battery, mm -hmm. and it uh, shorted out and caught fire. This has been happening not a lot, but uh, a little bit lately with uh, cell phones and computers and laptops. So you might want to be careful and, and uh, just make sure that those things aren't getting too hot. Um, next one, a 32-year-old mother of two has been sued for over $220,000 by the Record Industry of America. Not very nice. It is not very nice. They say that she shared 24 songs over the Kazaa network, so that nets out to about $9,200 per song, and they're going after her. She is appealing the case. She's saying that it's a case of mistaken identity, so we'll be keeping our eyes on that one on the site as well. Finally. A Ohio politician is giving a presentation to high school students, a PowerPoint presentation that he is serving from a thumb drive. All of a sudden, in the middle of the presentation, up on the screen behind him, shows up a bunch of porn. Of course, he said that it's not his flash drive. Uh, comes back a couple days later, this is after we already did the initial story, comes back a couple days later and says that it's from his son. So he's blaming it on his son for all the porn. Thanks, Dad. Exactly. Well, you can learn more about all those stories and more at switch.com. Now, embarrassing photos aren't the only things you don't want to put on the wrong drive. Corporations and governments spend millions of dollars trying to safeguard their data. And when that data gets lost or stolen, they turn to a new breed of high-tech private eyes, dusting for a new type of fingerprint. It's called digital forensics. And we got to look inside the crime lab. Deleted files are no match for digital investigation firm Strauss Friedberg. Hired by prosecutors and high-profile corporate clients, Strauss Freeberg uses special software to piece together files that people thought they deleted for good. It's all part of a digital paper trail that, says Strauss Freeberg investigator Brian Rose, is becoming increasingly important evidence in criminal and civil trials. Every time you log on a computer, uh, whether you're on the internet, whether you're creating a document using a word or word perfect, you're leaving a lot of fingerprints. If you delete a file once, it goes to your recycle bin. Anybody can get that back by going into your mailbox and clicking on the recycle bin, and it's sitting there just as it was sitting in your inbox, and that doesn't take any skill at all. If you delete it twice, uh, it can be recovered uh, sometimes. It's not always comprehensive, it depends. Uh, when you delete something from your computer, even if you delete it twice, it doesn't delete it, it simply tells the computer that that space is available uh, to write data to but the file's still sitting there until the uh, data is written over it. So there's often a lot of information on there that people intend to delete. Now that takes some forensic skill. It takes specialized tools and it takes uh, forensic knowledge to know how to recover those, but we can recover that data fairly readily. While digital fingerprints are great for crime fighting, they can also be used by identity thieves. You'd be surprised how many times people dump hard drives with the information just sitting there and all it requires is somebody to plug into their computer uh, to get that information. In common sense, things you don't want people to have. The most common, I think, are probably you know, social security numbers, credit card numbers, and bank account numbers. If somebody has those, uh, there's a tremendous amount they can do, particularly if they have it in combination with a name uh, and an address. Uh, so I think you want to be very careful about putting those on your computer. You certainly don't want to store those in a Word document that's sitting on your desktop so that if somebody opens up your computer, they can get to it. Just because you deleted those embarrassing photos from last weekend from your hard drive doesn't mean they're gone forever. The good news, there are simple utilities that exist to make sure that what you delete stays deleted. Here's how it works. We chose Eraser from Heidi Software because it's simple to use, it's a lightweight program, and best of all, it's free. What Eraser does is it overwrites the data that you've deleted up to seven times with a random string of numbers. It's the same method that the Department of Defense uses to make sure that national security secrets stay secret. Open it up and then click New Task in the upper left-hand corner. That'll open up a dialog box that lets you choose whether you want to just overwrite the unused space on your drive or specific files in a folder or a file by itself. Choose the file you want to get rid of and click OK. This will create a new task in your task window. Click that and then click the button marked Run. And then your file is permanently gone. 
Keeping the files on your hard drive safe is only half the battle. There's a whole new generation of computer users who are posting their entire lives online on MySpace and Facebook. Check out the next episode of The Switch Show, where we'll ask author and tech expert Clay Shirky how the online world is changing our very notion of privacy.